the right to vote, the precious right to vote. Um, I'll just come out and say it. I don't think it's precious. I don't think it's a proper right if we're going to be serious about the definition of rights at all. Um, in order to form an opinion on the right to vote, let's first look at what it is that is being voted on. Okay, Politicians are being voted into office, right? In order to achieve what? To accomplish what? Well, politicians are going to push uh, policies, and those policies are going to result in things happening in society. Well, under the current you know, democratic model, that is that, that is what we have uh, here in the United States, and you know, a lot of other places as well. Uh, policy means what? Well, policy means the state, basically, in very simple terms, the state deciding how much of people's incomes it's going to confiscate and yes it is confiscation when it's done at gunpoint it's actually robbery um, and yes taxes are collected at gunpoint ask anybody who, who decided not to pay taxes ask them what happened to them um, and yes at the end of that process you you're gonna see the you know you're gonna stare down the barrel of a gun that's that's exactly what stands behind the IRS and any other tax collection agency in history a man with the gun. Now we've all been conditioned to not see the gun. It's a very important point. We've all been conditioned to not see the gun. But I'm, you know, at the risk of repeating myself and others who've made the same point before here and elsewhere, yes, yes, the ultimate result of not paying taxes is actually death. How? Well, very simple. You you refuse to pay your tax. They start harassing you, demanding that you do pay your tax. You you keep refusing. Um, they all, they're going to send you letters. You're going to get phone calls. But eventually, people are going to show up at your door. Maybe the first time they come, they're not armed. But if you keep refusing to talk to them, refusing to pay the tax, armed men are going to show up at your doorstep. And they are going to arrest you. What does arrest mean? Well, they're going to grab you physically and kidnap you out of your house. If by kidnapping we understand forcibly taking some somebody from wherever they are to another place where they don't want to go, which is exactly what's going to happen if they, if you get arrested, you're going to be handcuffed and dragged off to a prison. Okay, and if you resist the kidnappers, as you as any normal person would, if you resist the kidnappers, now again they're going to be wearing uniforms and they're going to have badges. But they're going to be kidnappers nonetheless. If you resist them, they will shoot you dead. And they will get away with it. They can do it. <laughs> because, because they're the police. They're their state. Uh, you're resisting arrest. Nobody's supposed to resist arrest. Now, you can resist other kidnappers, but not the uniform kidnappers with badges, right? Uh, because some man in a black robe signed a piece of paper that says that you should be thrown into a cage. I'm talking about an arrest warrant signed by a judge, right? For not paying your taxes. Again, mind you, that is the ultimate result of somebody not paying taxes. You can die if you consistently resist. If you consistently resist the state trying to take your money, you will die. And nobody's going to suffer for it. I mean, none of the people that perp perpetrate that on you and your family are going to suffer for it. They're going to be justified by the state. In the eyes of the state, and and sadly, probably in the eyes of uh, you know much of the society too, because much of the society is very much statist. So, uh, back to the question of voting and the right to vote. Well, that's what's being voted on: the the, the state forcibly taking other people's property and you know ordering them around, other people. I mean, or ordering people around, telling them what they can and can't do, even you know if it doesn't harm anybody, even if they even if they don't, um, if they even if they don't assault anybody's uh, personal property still there's some things that you're not allowed to do for example very soon you're not going to be able to buy or i mean you're already not able to produce certain incandescent light bulbs by 2014 you know if you wanted to start a business uh, manufacturing incandescent light bulbs in the united states you can't you can't if you if you have all the equipment to do it and you have willing customers lining up to buy a product even still you can't do it why because the law the law says so so uh, that's what the state does it, it orders people around and takes their money it sort of shuffles it about it feeds itself it's a huge bureaucracy which keeps growing and growing which is its natural tendency um, 
to survive and procreate. Basically, any any being, <laughs> any entity, tries to do those two things much of the time. Um, and when when we're voting, we're voting on how that process is going to go. Well, how should it go? What's your moral viewpoint on that? My moral viewpoint is that it shouldn't it shouldn't continue to exist. It's deeply immoral. It's antisocial. It's anti-voluntary interactions between people. It's coercive in its very nature, and therefore, in my eyes, morally illegitimate. But when we vote, when we participate in a democratic voting process, that is exactly what we make happen. We vote on how other people's money is going to be taken from them and how innocent people are going to be ordered about and forced to do certain things and not do other things that they otherwise would do. Now, I guess it's clear from my, you know, from 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 this that my position is uh, voting democratically voting on, you know, any state in any state elections, and I don't mean state as opposed to national. I mean in, in any government elections, is actually participating in, a, in an inherently violent process, and I would consider that illegitimate. The only exception to that is uh, basically the same exception that would apply to using violence and uh, in my opinion it is okay to use violence in self-defense when somebody's trying to break into your house and harm your family it's okay to harm them back um, and uh, there's nothing wrong in, in, in my opinion there's nothing wrong with that well uh, I do believe in self-defense voting now self-defense voting is kind of, is a lot trickier than self-defense proper because it, it's pretty clear you know who's in Who's in whose house and who's who's coming in with or without permission? If if there's a, a break in in progress, and you, you understand, you, you haven't invited these guys that, in the ski masks. Uh, they're clearly here against your will and against your consent. Um, and yeah, you, you know, it's pretty it's pretty pretty clear cut what should and shouldn't be done. With self defense voting, uh, I would consider self defense voting if if you're voting for a politician that you have absolute certainty. Uh, that that person is going to curb and curtail the state's power over you. That is an almost impossible situation because all you have to go on usually is a promise. They say they're going to do X, Y, Z if, if you get them into office. You know, of course, the politicians never break promises. It never happens. Um, but. Uh, Sometimes I, I guess you know it's possible to make an exception. I mean, I um, I was very skeptical for a long time about Ron Paul. This is not a, uh, a Ron Paul, you know, Ron Paul 2012 video, but uh, it's interesting that, that you know you, you're actually able to find at least this one guy who's clearly, you know, had a record of you know being absolutely straight as a, as straight as an arrow from a libertarian perspective. He's uh, he's consistently voting against the, you know the statist measures that. Uh, Sometimes he's the only guy voting against um, the status measures that his colleagues in Congress are trying to push through. He's consistently libertarian. I'm very happy, uh, basically, with his uh, ideology, which he has a lot of chances to explain through numerous books that he's written. And uh, I find that you know I, I I can't find really a position that I would hold against him uh, from a policy perspective. And he has a record to prove that he puts his money where his mouth is. Is he's actually done it for thirty years? Um, it's it's amazing. You know, th there's a big debate that we could have, but we're not going to have. Um, not not you know not in the uh, in the scope of this video. Whether you know voting for Ron Paul means endorsing the whole status system and blah blah blah. But I believe in self defense voting. You know, y y if you can, if you can, uh, hey, you know, what's the worst that can happen? He doesn't win, right? Well. Guess what? That that that's the same thing that's happened every other time, but self-defense voting in the sense that you can get a guy in there that may be able, may be able, and it's never irreversible anyway. But he may be able to curtail some of the state power over you. So he's using his position, uh, or you know, he, he may use his position uh, as some kind of state official to actually cut off one of the state's heads, one of the hydra's heads. That's not that's not bad, and it's it's uh, it's morally permissible uh, as a libertarian, at least. I believe it's morally permissible to use that kind of election violence in self-defense.